Today we're going to talk about a topic that actually pops up in quite a few relationships mm -hmm. and it has been in ours and ours in and out as well. Yep. It is building attraction back after long periods of resentment. Whew. It is a tough, a tough thing to do, a doable thing to do, Very but doable. there are some really important um, factors, parts of this that we have to keep in mind when giving our partners and ourselves space to rebuild that attraction back. So first and foremost, as Stacey just kind of alluded to, uh, Stacey, your name is Stacey, yeah, close enough. Whatever. Yeah, uh, resentment, when that is gone or when that is slowly going away, that is how attraction is able to grow. So attraction needs that space and that time to grow. And if that resentment that you're harboring is not brought into the light and your partner is not receptive to it, as well as you are not receptive to letting it go, attraction is not gonna be able to be rebuilt. It's not gonna be able to have any space to kind of change the framework of your relationship. And you need safety yes. in the relationship in order for attraction to regrow. So of course, when we are talking about this, let's make it explicit that if you are in an unsafe relationship, you are not gonna be working on ways to build attraction. But a lot of ways that um, safety is eroded in relationships can be by hurtful things, mm -hmm. arguments, as well as repair that hasn't happened or wounds that haven't been healed emotionally and relationally. And if those wounds keep getting triggered, the relationship still feels unsafe and attraction is not going to be able to be rebuilt and happen. So those two things, attraction needs space to grow back and it also needs to be a safe relationship, especially emotionally. Yeah. I think another really important factor other than safety is the idea of time. Oh, yes. If sexual attraction has been impacted because of how big the resentment is, this is going to take time to heal. And it's what you do during that healing time that is so important where that safety has to be built back, but also how you talk about physical attraction, how you talk about sex, how you talk about intimacy while you are giving each other time to heal is really mm -hmm. important. One of the worst things you can do that we see a lot that actually totally negates that safety that Rachel was talking about is pushing for sex or pushing for Ugh. intimacy while you are both trying to heal. Putting pressure on it is going to give you the exact opposite yes. outcome that you're wanting. And again, that safety is gone. We feel, I don't know. Closed it, off, closed off. Up. Yep. They don't get it. They don't get me. I'm expected to do something even when I'm so hurt. So taking the pressure off while allowing both of you time to heal from that resentment is one of the best things you can do. And let's normalize some of the feelings that Stacy just identified that pop up because while you're building attraction up after resentment, you may have very different experiences during this time than your partner and all yeah. those feelings are valid. Yes. So one partner might feel really rejected. I might feel really disappointed. I might feel um, angry mm -hmm. or hurt that, hey, we're not you know, connecting in that way or not attracted to each other in that way. And then, you know, Stacy's my partner. She may feel like we mentioned really on guard, walled off. She still may be dealing with her detachment from our relationship. She may be skeptical that she can trust me. She may be skeptical that pressure isn't going to be put on the table. Yep. Whatever the feelings are, both of you are allowed to feel them, but take a lot of consideration in how you express them. And remember, it's not your job to fix your partner's feelings. It's not your partner, yes. your um, responsibility to do something about it. That's more your own discomfort with the fact that they're upset, they're sad, they're skeptical. So remember, out them and put them into the light versus trying to um, make comfortable your discomfort. Because mm -hmm. you're allowed to be disappointed. Yep. You're allowed to be skeptical. Talking about it is so key. Yes. Yep. So a couple tips of yes. how, to, how to kind of get there, how to establish safety, what to do during this potentially long amount of time that you're trying to heal. First would be is bringing back physical connection with zero pressure or expectation of sex. So physically just spending time together. This might be a little cuddle on the couch or hand holding, hugging, kissing, or it could even be a step removed from that and yeah. it's going out to dinner together, doing chores around the house together, making dinner together, mini golf, bowling, like you yeah. name it, physically being in the same space and connecting. Interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. As just humans 
who are trying to like each other again yep. um, versus humans trying to get to an end goal, which is, you know, physical intimacy in one way. Find ways to also talk about what shuts down that willingness or want to do those activities together. So what those triggers to resentment are. So a tip we give a lot is let's say something goes on during the day, your partner does something and you feel yourself actually shut down and not want to connect. You feel that attraction being impacted. Tell your partner sooner than later. It doesn't mean they walk in the door and you're like, by the way, what you did earlier made me really resentful. But again, come from a place of openness and curiosity because the faster and sooner you bring that to the light, you're also going to be able to include your partner in what they can do as well as what you may need to do to lessen the impact of those things because it's going to happen. You're going to make missteps. Progress is not linear. So being really aware of what those triggers are that's that kind of set off resentment or you know shut down attraction is super important. Absolutely. And I think having um, another tip would be an individual reflection and conversation with yourself around realistic expectations mm -hmm. um, about your dynamic, about yourself, knowing who your partner is, knowing what your relationship is, um, making sure that you have yourself in check and that you are not bringing to the table something unrealistic or something that maybe um, if your intent is really good because you think a month is long enough to move past everything, um, but the impact of that is actually part of this damage that we're talking about. So you gotta hold yourself accountable during, during this process and making sure that your expectations align with the actual goal of what, what you and your partner are looking for. A couple more tips along the lines of what Stacy has mentioned. Have zero, um, I like maybe start from zero on what you think excites your partner, yeah. what they're attracted to, yeah. what they like. Assume you two know nothing about each other in this department and stay curious, get to know it. Blank slate, so something that worked five years ago, assume it doesn't work now. Ask, what would make your partner feel good? What would make them want to cuddle? What would make them want to possibly kiss? Or just like cuddle on the couch. It doesn't have to be this high stakes thing like Stacy mentioned. Assume you know nothing about each other and start building that knowledge base again. Another really tactile thing that you can practice is looking into sensate focus. There's so much literature out there around it and there's a lot of guidance. You can literally Google sensate focus and do uh, Cornell University has a really amazing handout and they walk you step by step on a really safe way to rebuild um, that attraction and that physical intimacy and that you can do at your own pace in the privacy of your own home. Mm -hmm. And if you are listening to this, thinking this all sounds good, how do we start having that conversation? Um, we also have Stop Fighting, Start Talking, which will give you a five-step process of even how to bring up some of these difficult conversations, whether it's around expectations, resentment, yep. the healing, the space, we will link it, or you can click the banner on the top of our YouTube channel, but plenty of resources there. Remember, safety, time, realistic expectations, we have been there before. You can get through it. We know you can.